One of the great Cal traditions was meeting in the Greek theater, a bunch of wooden rails lit on fire. The team would come out, coach would come out, cheerleaders would come out, freshman or wood, freshman or wood. Perfect way to start a Friday evening. There are all kinds of fans out there, but the best kind of fans are the loyal ones. Here's their story. Brought to you by Hyundai. A revolution was being born in Berkeley. And one walk down Telegraph Avenue was all it took, and, and I had to be there in the middle of all the political change. It was the 60s, and we were focused on stopping the war in Vietnam. We elected a group of cheerleaders that were peace cheerleaders. Coexisting with the counterculture and the demonstrations was this very traditional uh, football team. Cal football was like a glue that helped us hang together that everyone kept talking about something called the big game and about the ax, you know, just give them the ax, give them the ax, and the neck, the neck, the neck. We were the public school kids and they were the private school kids, the elitists. And so it was a natural rivalry. I was a dorm counselor in an undergraduate dorm. There were two of us and Mark says, well, do you want me to go first? And I said, well, duh, yes. So about three minutes later, it comes flying out of the room, uh, having been uh, unceremoniously ejected by the athletes. Steve was one of those students, and we got friendly and was a dorm counselor. So he had been drafted number one by the Atlanta Falcons, first pick, first round in the 1975 draft. And he was having problems with the initial parts of the negotiation. And then we talked about it for a while. And then he asked me to represent him, and, and I did. So we end up with the largest rookie contract in NFL history. In those first years, it was heavily, heavily, heavily Cal players. In 1977, I think I represented six or seven players who got drafted from Cal. We never needed our team to be undefeated every year. What was critical to us as alums was that they be high character kids and that they be real students and they actually matriculate and then that we play entertaining football because it's supposed to be a, a character building uh, process. Oh my God, how depressing. Stanford had beaten us in our own stadium, you know, and, and that was bragging rights in the Bay Area. The ball gets kicked off and um, there's real chaos on the field. It's really hard to follow it. And Kevin Mullen keeps moving forward and it's like watching a spider on acid. He keeps moving in these bizarre directions. No whistle blown. And all of a sudden you see the band start to run on the field. He runs in between them. We actually won the game. And it probably characterized the spirit of Cal more in an evocative way than anything else could. Unlikely, uh, improbable, and yet ultimate triumph. I always make sure to thank Steve Bartkowski. The opportunity to to blend my love of sports, the concept of role modeling and having clients who set up charitable programs with some of the best friendships that I've ever made. Um, I've been blessed, blessed. Um, I couldn't imagine a, a finer way to spend uh, the last 40 years. This loyalty story brought to you by Hyundai and the Post Game.